Okay, so now we're going to learn about the present subjunctive. Um, now, the subjunctive is, is a fairly advanced topic, mostly because there isn't a very good English equivalent for the subjunctive. So most of the time that we use subjunctive, the construction is entirely different from, from what you would say in English. Uh, so it's a little bit challenging to get used to using the subjunctive and to recognize the patterns that the subjunctive requires, which are, which are quite a few. Um, we're going to get into what the actual patterns are, uh, and like I said, that there are a few of them, so um, you'll have to work and practice quite a bit to get them all down, um, but we'll do that in a little bit. We're going to start off by learning what the actual conjugations are. Um, so the, this is the subjunctive conjugation, present subjunctive, for AR verbs. So. Um, if you look at these, you'll notice that these are actually two things you might notice about them. One, they're very similar to the, the imperative conjugations. Um, amos, en, and e are all the conjugations that we use for the imperative. Only the second person changes for the subjunctive to es and ace. So um, the other thing that you prob probably notice is that the ar present subjunctive conjugations were the actual ER present indicative conjugations. Indicative is, is the regular present tense that we learned first. Hablo, hablas, um, and, and all those. Uh, and, and so you, you probably noticed that, once again, these are all the conjugations for the ER verbs. The one additional note for present subjunctive is that this E gets used for yo also. So the first and third person singular are always exactly the same um, conjugations. There's no irregularity off of these two. If one is irregular, they're both irregular. They're both always the same. So the first and third person singular for present subjunctive are always identical. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the verb hablar. So in the subjunctive tense, this becomes hable, hables, hable, hablemos, habléis, and hablen. Um, so one of the uses that we'll learn more about is I want you to speak. So that would use the subjunctive. So it's quiero que um, hables español. So that, that's I want you to speak Spanish. I want you, usted, would be quiero que hable español. I want us, quiero que hablemos español. Vosotros, quiero que vosotros habléis español. Ustedes, quiero que hablen español. Um, and if, if I wanted to say, my brother wants me to speak Spanish, I could say, mi hermano quiere que yo hable español. So uh, that, that's a little example of the AR verbs in the present subjunctive. So again, the endings are E, S, E, Amos, Ace, N, which happen to be exactly the same ones, except for the yo form, which is just copied over from third person, um, as the ER endings for the indicative. Similarly, Here in the ERIR, we see that these, except for the yo, as, a, amos, ice, an, are the AR verbs. So those are those were the AR endings for the indicative tense. So, so those get used for this the sub subjunctive. Um, and again, these are almost identical to the imperative ones for these for these three. These are identical. A, an, amos, and then only these ones are different. As and ice. Uh, so, if I wanted to say, I want, I want you to learn Spanish, so the other one was, was speak, now we're doing learn. Quiero que aprendas español. Quiero que aprenda español. Quiero que aprendamos español. Quiero que aprendáis español. Y quiero que aprendan español. Um, if I, if... My brother wants me to learn Spanish. I would say, Mi hermano quiere que aprenda 
español. O quiere, quiere que yo aprenda español. Um, so, once again, these are the same conjugations as the indicative for AR. So the, the two kind of switch places. The ER um, becomes the endings for the AR verbs, and the AR endings become the endings for the ERIR, indicative versus subjunctive. So some people find that confusing, uh, but that, that's the way that it works. So that's the conjugations for the present subjunctive.